Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. Today we will de continue with our discussion topic 3.2 Kepler's law. Okay. So our learning standard is uh, at for you to un to understand and to describe uh, Kepler's law. Uh, Kepler's law. We have three Kepler's law. One, two, and three. So who is Johannes Kepler? He is a he was a German astronomist, mathematician, and an astrologist who formulated three laws that describe the movement of planets around the sun. So what is the first law? So the first law said that all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus, also known as law of orbit. Okay, again, all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. Uh, means means that okay, look at here. Okay, so this is the sun. So this is a planet. So the planet will move around uh, following an orbit, and the shape of the orbit is ellipse. Okay. okay we have a first activity. Okay, how to draw ellipse. Okay, so you have uh, two thumbtacks, a thread, um, a pencil and a piece of paper and on the piece of paper you draw two lines, one is what we call minor axis, another one is major axis. So the two thumbtacks is put at a point F1 and also F2. So let's see how we do it. Okay. <coughs> Okay, this is a piece of paper, two thumbtacks, and we tie the uh, uh, two ends of the string uh, with the thumbtacks. Okay, so so this is the pencil or pen. Okay, so we start here, okay. and the upper part. Alright, now we have a very good shape of ellipse. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, answer a few questions. Okay, name the shape of it used by the planets in the solar system. So the shape is ellipse. Second question. Uh, describe how the distance between the Earth and the Sun change when the Earth makes a complete orbit around the Sun. So the distance is further at the major axis. So at the major axis, the distance is uh, further. Okay. Discuss how the shape of the Earth's orbit will be if the major axis is almost as long as the minus axis. So here we can see that the major axis is longer than the minor axis. When the major axis and the minor axis equal distance, so it will the shape of the orbit will become almost round or circle. So the planets in the solar system have elliptical shape orbits. Okay, first point. Second point. Sun always stay on a focus of the ellipse. Okay, so here is the location of the sun. And the major axis is longer than the minor axis. As such, the shape of the elliptical orbit of the planet in the solar system is almost round. Okay. And planets can be assumed to make circular motion around the sun. The radius of orbit is the average value of the distance between the planet and the sun. Okay, that will be the first law. Okay, let's move, move, move on to the second law. So Kepler, Kepler's law said that a line that can connect a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. This is also known as law of areas. A line that connect a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Okay, let's move, understand. What does it mean? So this is the uh, the ellipse, the orbits. Okay, uh, this is the planet. This is the sun. Okay. 
So if a planet takes the same amount of time to move from A to B, so this is from A to B, so the planet move from A to B, uh, and also from C to D, so the time from A to B equals uh, for the time from uh, from C to D. Therefore, uh, the area AFB is the same, AFB, area AFB, the blue region here, equals to the area CFD. And the distance AB is longer than distance CD. So AB longer than CD. And the planet is moving at higher linear speed from A to B. So here is faster. And C to D is slower. Okay. Okay. So this is slower. And then faster. And so okay. Okay, so now Kepler's third law. Okay, Kepler third law said that uh, the square of the orbital or period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbits. This is also known as law of period. So this time we have two uh, uh, two quanti quantity that is what orbital period. Okay, square t square. And cube, cube uh, radius r r cube. Okay, r kosa tiga. T square r kosa tiga. Right. So what does it mean? Okay. Um. So a planet which orbit with a larger radius has a longer orbital period. Okay. So this is the planet, the sun. So planets are move uh, orbiting around the suns. Okay. Now what happened is the the longer the orbit, the longer the time for the planets to complete the orbits. Okay, so planets which are further from the sun take a longer time to complete one orbit around the sun. For example, the Earth, the Earth uh, has a one year takes one year to complete uh, the orbits, while Saturn uh, takes twenty nine point five years to complete the orbits. Okay. So we have the mathematics um, uh, equation. So we have t square, yeah, t square directly proportional to r cube. Where t is the orbital period. Orbital period means the time taken for the planet to complete one orbit, and radius is the the distance between the center of the sun to the planet. Okay. Now, let's move on. Uh, we look at the uh, the planet and the orbital period. So Mercury zero point two years, Venus zero point six years, Earth one years, Mars one point nine years, Jupiter eleven point nine years, Saturn twenty nine point five years, Uranus eighty four point zero years, Neptune the longest time one six four point eight years. Cool. Okay. Now, uh, now we are going to formulate Kepler's third law. So we know that Newton's third law can be formulated using Newton's universal law of gravitation and concept of circular motion. We have learned that uh, through the the first topic three point one, the the formula of universal law of gravitation, gravitation, and also the circular motion. And also the second point, planets make circular motion around the sun. Right, and the centrifugal force equals to the gravitational force between the sun and the planets. Okay, so look at this information. Okay, uh, the mass of the the mass of the sun is m. Mass of the planet is uh, small m. Radius of the orbit small r. Gravitational force f. Okay, and linear speed of the planet is V and orbital period of the planet is T, capital T. Okay, so we are going to derive relationship between the orbital period of the planet and the radius of the orbit. So we have uh, from the concept we discussed last time, centripetal force equals to gravitational force, where the formula for gravitational, oh sorry, centripetal force is mv square over r. And gravitational force equals to G M cap, uh, big M 
times small m uh, divided by r square. Okay. And we simplify the equation where we cross cancel the m. So we get v square equals to capital G atau G m over r. Okay. So this is a formula regarding the speed of the planet gravitational constant m is the mass of the sun and r is the uh, the orbital distance between the sun and the planet now we have another formula linear speed equals to distance travel in one complete orbit over orbital period so distance complete in uh, distance travel in one complete orbital is the perimeter right, of the uh, orbit is given by the formula 2 pi r and orbital period is t so we have v equals to 2 pi r over t now just now we have derived so we get v square over g equals to gm over r right so what we do is we uh, substitute v with 2 pi r over t and we get this equation right and from there we uh, arrange the equation so that t T will be the the title of the equation. So what we get is T square equals to four. Uh, two square is what four pi square, right? And R we take out, uh, and then G M coming here, and R coming here. So this is R square, right? So R here is going to be R R cube. So we have the equation four pi square over G M times R cube. Now what we do is uh, we substitute uh, the the k. This is k is a constant with four pi square over g m. So from there we get the equation t square equals to k r cube. So this is the equation regarding what Kepler's third law. So from here we can see that t square is directly proportional to r cube where k is the constant. Okay. Alright, so from there we we get the mathematical t square directly proportional to r cube where t is the orbital period of the planet and r is the radius of the of the orbit. Okay, now we move to another activity solve problem using Kepler's third law formula. Okay, so just now this is a formula. Okay, let's say you have two planets okay, uh, orbiting around the sun. So, like planet 1 and planet 2. Okay, planet 1, the equation we use here, we get T1 square and so on. And then, this is equation for planet 2. So, what we do is, we substitute the constant K. So, we get this question, T1 square equals to KR1 cube. And T2 square equals to KR2 cube where k is the constant so we arrange the, uh, the equation and we get the formula t1 square over t2 square equals to r1 cube over r2 cube okay so this is a very important uh, equation for us to so, uh, to solve the problem using Kepler's third law formula okay now we proceed uh, to look at one quick uh, question okay Figure below shows the planets Earth and Mars orbiting the Sun. Okay, so the radius of the orbit of the Earth is 1.5 times 10 to the power of 11 meter. Orbital period of the Earth and Mars is one year and 1.88 years, respectively. So calculate the radius of the orbit of Mars. Okay, so we use the the information given. So radius of uh, orbit of the okay um Earth okay this equation uh, 1.5 times 10 to power 11 meter unknown mass radius of mass is unknown R2 orbital period of Earth is T1 equals to one year orbital period of mass equals T2 equals to 1.88 years so the unit of period is years okay now we substitute the equation. Uh, T1 square equals over T2 square equals to R1 cube over R2 cube. And we got this information. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, period for Earth divided by mass. This is the radius Q, Q and also R, unknown R cube. So we arrange uh, the equation and we get this uh, uh, equation and this is the 
the final answer r equals to 2.28 times 10 to power 11 meter okay. ok, I cut dulu 1.5 darab 11 ini kan untuk bracket dan kita kuasa 3 dia ok darab 1.88 kuasa 2 ok kita dapat ni kan ok kemudian kita nilai ni kita ambil punca kuasa 3 ok alright tu jawapan dia dan kita nak tahu dah panjang kan so kita tukarkan dia dalam bentuk standard form dan dia dapat 2.28 darab 10 kuasa 11 meter ok betul kan jawapan dia ok now let's move on to next question ok a research satellite needs to orbit at a height of 300 km to capture clear image of the surface of the earth so what is the orbital period of the satellite ok so we use the information now radius of orbit of the satellite given that the distance between the earth and the satellite is 380 km that is equivalent to 380 times 10 to the power of 3 meter right now the distance radius must consider from the center of the earth so we have to know the uh, radius of the earth so radius of the earth is given by 6.37 times 10 to power of 6 meter uh, 6 meter and then you sum up you get this equation uh, this uh, number so 6.71 times 10 to power of 6 meter now the radius of the the radius orbit of the moon so r2 given okay now here in this question uh, we this time earth is the center and given that satellite is orbiting the earth so we have to use another satellite that is the moon in order to make the comparison if we want to use the formula the third law Kepler's formula okay that's why we use the moon uh, information about the moon so moon is another satellite the natural satellite for the earth okay so you substitute with the formula okay so you get this equation okay uh, Okay, now let let me try to show you how we get the answer. Six point seven five times six power exponent close to bracket. Um, plus bigger. Okay, time 655.2 Okay Alright Divide by Okay, divide by Close the bracket 3.83 Times H Exponent Okay uh, Close the bracket and was it equal? And now take the square root. Alright, now you get the answer 1.53 1.53 hours. Okay, alright. Alright, so that is how we solve the problem uh, using Kepler's third law of uh, motion. Okay, so that's it for our lesson today for. Uh, Topic 3.2, Kepler's Law. Okay, thank you. See you again next time.